Thank you, guys. Man, and everybody online joining us, so glad you're with us again. I believe God has a word for you and, and everyone here. I hope you got your notes out. You're going to take some notes. When God speaks to your heart, I hope you write it down. It's going to be good stuff today. Well, today's title of today's message is, is You Are a World Changer. You're a world changer, right? And think about right now, can't our world use a little changing, amen? Amen? Isn't it amazing, though, that God chose you right now in this time period of history? He didn't choose you 100 years from now or 100 years back. He chose you right now. And to me, probably one of the toughest times ever, right? He chose you to be a world changer. Now, what can save the world? Think about this. Is it the perfect political leader? Is it a virus-free world? No, his name is Jesus Christ. He is the antidote for this world. Amen? Everybody can say amen to that. Jesus really is the reason for this season, the Savior of the world. Let's pray. Lord, our upside-down world needs changing. And we know you have a plan to turn it right side up. That plan includes us talking about you. I pray for a radical spiritual transformation in each, in each one of us today. Help us as believers to catch your fire like never before. Help us understand if we want the world to change, we have to change first. As we open up your word today, would you speak to us? Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles out there, go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Some of you got your version Bible. Some of you got your hard Bibles. Online right now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We'll be there in just a second. Real quick, I want to take a poll. How many of you like to run? Raise your hand if you just you like to run. It's, 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 you enjoy it. All right, here's, here's a better question. How many of you like to eat? That's a better question. I'm going to call you a foodie. I, I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie, right? One of my favorite places to eat, I grew up in California, is um, called In-N-Out Burger. My friends on California, In-N-Out Burger, say amen online if you're watching. In-N-Out Burger, the double-double, you can't beat it, animal style, some of you know what that means. You know, last week I read this, that in Colorado, they just, they don't branch off very often, there's a couple in Texas, but they opened one up in Colorado, a 14-hour wait for a hamburger. And then a fight broke out, well, no kidding. Good golly, so back to this. I hate running, I really believe it's punishment. The only time I ran was when the coach said, send some back pain, because I was dorking around, all right, which was often, right? Now my good friend, Derek Doherty, lives in our town. He said, hey, this was years ago. said, hey, Terry, you want to be a part of a relay team, you know? And I said, no, nah, I don't think so, man. And he goes, hey, really, would you do it? So I go, finally said, okay, I'll be on your team. About a month before this race, I figured I better start training. I got some shoes, and I remember I stretched for like 30 seconds and took off out the door, and I made it to the mailbox at the end of my driveway, and I felt something in the back of my leg. It didn't fit, feel right. I wasn't injured, but it just didn't feel right. I turn, True story, I turned around, walked back in the house, called Derek and said I'm injured. That's how much I love running. <laughs> it's punishment. Tanya, when she runs, she feels good. She often comes home from her long run and says, man, I heard God. He spoke to me about this. I don't get it. I don't get it. When I run, all I feel is, feel is cheeseburgers punching me in the back of the leg. That's all. And I hear nothing. She gets endorphins. I get cramps. But do you know that God calls you to run? And he says, I want you to run your race, right? We all know that scripture. Run your race. But here's the deal. Before you run, you have to learn how to walk. I'm going to talk about that today, what it means to walk with him. I'll say it a little differently. It's out of our walking with him that we get the spiritual stamina to run the race he's called us to run. Could it be some of you are here right now, you're trying to run before you're walking with Jesus in, in a way I'm going to talk about today. See, it's not about walking where, it's about walking with who. It's walking with God. See, we're going to look at a scripture today again about a world changer. He walked with God for a long time. Last week, Pastor Garrett talked about living a holy life. You see, God says, because I am holy, you are to be holy. Amen? You are to be holy. We talked about what that looked like. But you can't get holy until you start spending time with the one that is holy. You see, when you start to hang out with him in this way I'm going to talk about today, you're going to start living a holy life. And here's the deal. The things that you used to do when you were a young Christian, as you grow in the Lord, the way I'm talking about, the things you used to be able to do no longer feel right. Now when you do them, they just don't feel right. And I don't understand what's happening is, is you spent time with the one that is holy, so this, the behaviors, the movies you're watching, the things you're saying now, they just don't feel right because the Holy Spirit's saying, what are you doing? You've hung out with me a long time, and now you're still talking. It just doesn't feel right. And God will begin to show you what those look like in your life, Right? Remember Enoch, talked about him, he walked with the Lord for a long time, right? This mighty man of faith, if there was a hall of fame for Christians, right, if you walked into this big building, hall of fame, you'd see a picture of Enoch, 
Moses, Abraham, and probably Enoch. Why? Because he walked with the Lord for a long time. Hebrews 11.5, actually, 11.5, it says this. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known, that's so good, he was known as a person who pleased God. Other people knew him. And it, was, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincere, sincerely seek him. See, it's impossible to please God without faith. And that's a strong word, impossible, right? Impossible. See, you can do all these other things, but if you don't have faith, you don't please God. Think about that. If you don't have faith, what is something that you've lost a little faith in? It's been a long time. You haven't seen a change, and you just don't get it, and you've stopped praying about it and stopped believing about it, right? Could it be that you're not pleasing God anymore in this area because you've stopped believing, stopped believing? You know, um, and you may think, well, what is faith? And we toss that word around a lot, don't we? Man, I just need a little more faith, or I've lost my faith. You ever felt that way? You've, you've tossed that word around, I, I don't get faith. Well, what really is faith? We see it in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. God says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. See, faith sees invisible things. You see it coming. Remember David? He, saw, he told Goliath, I'm going to kill you. He, he was calling it out of his mouth. Remember that giants, that, that song we sing, that third song? We're calling things out before we see it. David called out, you're dead, and you don't even know it, Goliath. He's calling it out. Check out this by Oswald Chambers said this. Faith enables the believing soul to treat the future as present and invisible as seen. See, there would be no Lifeway Church if 10 years ago, a handful of us leaders who, in our living room, we had no money, we had nothing, we had no idea what we're doing. God began to speak to about 10 of us and say, you're going to start a church. And we started, we looked at a daycare over here, right? And said, hey, we let us use your building to have church. I'm so glad God shut that door because the, the max was 30 people. <laughs> And then we checked out another building. We laid hands on another building and said, God, is this the building? And it wasn't. They, they wanted like 1.5 for a building that wasn't very good. And then finally the movie theater said, yes, you can use our building. After they told other people, you can't use it. God said, you could use it. Faith is believing in something you can't see for something that we just kept believing. God, you said this. You spoke this to us, and we're believing that this is going to happen. Here we are right now, meeting together in something God brought up. Amen. Now, faith is like a muscle. The more you use faith, the stronger it's going to get. All right? The opposite is true, too. Right? The opposite. But muscles that aren't used is, are, can get muscle atrophy. Some of you know what that is. Okay, remember when I broke my foot a few years ago really bad and I was in a cast? I couldn't put any weight on it. Right? My calf actually shrunk. You know, and it looked so weird when I looked in the mirror. And some of you like to tease me for my skinny legs. God will deal with you. But in the process of my already skinny legs, the right one, look, it looked like it evaporated. And that's kind of the way it is spiritually. You see, as I began to walk on it again, it grew back, and now it matches my left leg. Funny, right? But um, it matched. That when you spiritually start to exercise faith again, the faith muscle in you will start to grow. That's how it is. That's just how it is. It's the reality. Okay? Um, faith is a difference. This is key. Super simple. Listen. Faith is a difference. From something happening in your life and not happening. Faith is a difference. I'll say that again. It's super simple. Faith is a difference from something happening in your life and not happening. What's not happening and you need to exercise a little more faith in? I'm just telling you. It's super simple. Remember how Jesus couldn't do any miracles in his hometown because of unbelief? Remember? This is serious business for us today. You see, unbelief in your life can shut down Jesus from showing up. Could Jesus have done a miracle in his hometown of Nazareth? Think about that. Could Je yeah, of course he could. He's God, right? He could have. But why didn't he? Because right now, many years later, he's painted a picture for us, right? You want me to show up? You want me to change, change that spouse of yours that needs to know Jesus? You want me to move in your kid's life? You want me to change your boss's heart? You want my, your neighbor to get to know Jesus? Keep believing and trust in me, right? Point number one for you awesome note takers. If you're taking notes online, awesome. Enoch walked with God. If you're taking notes, he walked with God. Now, this is key. Listen, it says he walked with God. He didn't sprint with God. There's a difference. I believe there's a lot of frustrated Christians because they're sprinters and not walkers. Right? That's how some people get. They get fired up. They, they get fired up when they go to church and they, they hear a message. They get inspired. Right? They sing, oh, my favorite worship song, Good, Good Father. Oh, it moves me. Right? And then they're fired up for a few weeks. They're fired up up here. 
few weeks go by, things in their life don't change, and they get frustrated. And when they get frustrated, they stop coming to church, they stop reading the Bible, stop praying. And then after about two or three months when their life has fallen apart, they come back, and they sprint for two or three weeks, and because things don't change, they're in this cycle. Frustrated, sprinting, frustrated. Could it be that you might be in a place of frustration because you're sprinting and not walking? I'm going to talk about what walking looks like in just a second. You see, walking is this. There's a, the big word for today, consistency. That's the, that's the key word if you're taking note. Go ahead and write down consistency. It was Enoch walked with God for a long time. The Bible says 300 years he walked. He walked with God. You know, walked with God. And walking is a hard concept for Americans, isn't it? Our Cambodian people, family that are watching right now online, Americans can be uh, impatient at times. We don't like to wait. I'll give you an example. This is Pastor Terry throwing himself under the bus. You see, a while back I went to McDonald's. And I chose McDonald's because it's called fast food. And I went through their line and I paid and I got to the second window. And they said, hey, I need you to, we need you to pull over to the waiting area to get your food. I didn't understand. What are you talking? Wait area. I ordered a hamburger with no onions. It wasn't that difficult, right? But I pulled over there, and they said they're going to bring the food to me. See, if I wanted slow food, I would have made my food at home, but I want a fast food. But we can be impatient, Americans, can't we? We can be impatient, and sometimes that can affect us spiritually, right? We don't like to wait on things. But, but if we aren't careful, our relationship with God can be a fast food friendship. We come to Jesus for a little bit, and then we walk, it's not happening, so we walk and we drive away. You didn't get my food on time, Jesus, I'm driving away. Fast food friendship. We know scripture says, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. God's telling us, wait on me. Will you walk with me? Will you wait on me? You see, there's no shortcut to spiritual growth. If we treat our relationship with the Lord like a sprint, you'll be in that frustration cycle that I talked about. Now, here's a key to a close relationship with God. I told you the word consistency. It's the key. Here's a no-brainer thought for us today. You cannot walk with God if you don't take time every day to go on walks with him in the secret place. I'm going to talk about what the secret place looks like in the secret place, okay? See, when you open up the Bible, it's another way. When you open the Bible, you're saying, Lord, I'm here. Will you speak to me? I'm, I'm going to take a walk with you today, God, in your word. Now, here's a secret to a close walk with the Lord. God tells us, this in Matthew 6.6. 6. You want to write that verse down? It's an amazing scripture. Here we go. It says this. But when you, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, shut the door, got away from Facebook, got away, got away from TV, got away from the kids, you shut the door, right? Pray to your father who is in the secret place. The father's waiting for you, right? And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. See, you opening up your Bible, and I've been guilty of this, Remember fast food? Open up my Bible while I'm waiting in line to pick up my kids from school, and I'll read you version, the quote of the day. That's called a spiritual snack. Could my frustration or your frustration as a Christian sometimes be because you're eating a lot of snacks, but you're not getting a meal in the secret place? A lot of snackers. We've all been guilty of snacking. God wants to give you a meal in the secret place with him. I'm going to talk about that. Now, another Another place that Jesus shows up, and I love this, is in the gathering. It's in the gathering where he shows up. If you're watching online gathering, you're with us today. So look at, take a look at Hebrews chapter 2. See, so we walk with God in our personal time, right? One-on-one -on -one daily, that close walk with him. But we also have a special time when we gather together. Check out Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That's awesome. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. He's talking about us, brothers and sisters, right? For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, and I will praise you among your assembled people. Jesus is saying right now, when you come together, I'm going to join you, and I'm going to praise the Father with you. Isn't that an amazing picture? When we're worshiping God, what we had earlier today, and you see my hands, and I'm getting excited because I know Jesus is walking around right now, and he's worshiping our Father with us. How many of us miss that we're standing there during worship? Nothing's coming out of our mouth, and Jesus walked by, and we wonder why we feel stale sometimes. I've been there. I've been stale. I've been a stale Christian. And worship is the key to unlocking the presence of God. Why do I sometimes, before I became a pastor, we show up late on purpose to miss worship so I can get the message? Because when you get in the presence of God, he'll begin to talk to you about some things, and maybe some things in our life you don't want to change. 
Maybe you want me to break up with that person that doesn't know you, Lord. You say don't be unequally yoked, but here I am, yoked with an unbeliever. And if I get in your presence, you're going to reveal that to me, so I don't go in the secret place, and I'll actually avoid worship because when I start singing, man, uh, the presence of God shows up in my life. All right, number one is this in that scripture. Uh, here's the, there's a lot to go on in Hebrews chapter 2, right? Number one is this. So he makes us holy. Who does? Jesus does. You can't make yourself holy when you walk with Jesus in the secret place. He makes you holy. Those things you used to say and do, you'll stop doing it because you've hung out with Jesus. All right? Number two is this. Jesus calls us his brothers and sisters. Why? Because we share the same father. And that amazed you. Ever think about that? And number three is Jesus says he will praise the Father among his assembled people. Jesus is telling when you gather, I'm showing up. Now, I can stop the message right there because there's so much to preach on in just that simple Hebrews chapter 2. But do you see the importance that Jesus is stressing in the gathering of his people? Now, I've been asked this as a pastor. Pastor, do I have to go to church to be a Christian? I, I, I ask him this. Why are you asking me that question? If you know Jesus is going to show up, remember he also says, where most people know this scripture, where two or, two or more gather in my name, I show up, right? So why are you asking me about how you cannot go to church to be a solid Christian when Jesus says, I show up in the gathering? That's the real question. All right? Okay, back to walking. Walking with God is, listen, long obedience. Everybody say long obedience. Long ob you're in it for the long haul, right? In the same direction. It's not the one song that makes you emotional. The one message that inspires you, those are good moments, but people of faith, listen, are walkers. Everybody say walkers. Man, you're, if you're a, you want to be a strong person of faith like Enoch, be a walker, not a sprinter. You're in it for the long haul. Consistency separates wannabes from real Christians. Oh, that's kind of harsh, Pastor. Consistency separates winners from wannabes. It separates the one-hit wonders from the world changers. Consistency. What does walking even mean? You say, well, pastor, what do you mean walking? Well, Amos 3, verse 3 says this. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? See, agreed can be translated harmony. They are in harmony because they're in sync. They've been walking with each other. This is the same objective to having an effective prayer life. Here we go. You want an effective prayer life? Here it is. It's not to get God what you want him to do. It's you to figure out what he wants you to pray for. And once you walk with him, he'll begin to show you what he wants you to pray for. And when you're, when you're in sync with what he's telling you to pray for, now things shift, right? You've been praying for a motorcycle, and God don't want you to have a motorcycle because you're, you're going to hurt somebody. That's why my wife won't let me have one, right? She knows it. I could be praying for the wrong thing. I'm out of sync with what Jesus wants me to pray for. But in the walking, I get in sync. I get in harmony. It's really simple. Really simple, right? Now, how can two walk together unless they're agreed? Agreed means you agree to showing up for your daily appointment for a walk with him. Okay, there are people with a spiritual gift of being late. Some of you have the spiritual gift of being late. Raise your hand if you know somebody with this gift. Some of you, that's you. Some of you, somebody else, right? Well, how do you, I don't know if that's me, Pastor. Let me help you out, okay? You say you're five minutes away, but you still got your pajamas on. You ever, I'm just right around the corner. Garrett does this. I'm right around the corner. 20 minutes later, well, that's a long corner. The second thing is, you get a different time for the birthday invite than other people. And you don't know this till you see it. And you realize yours says 1 o'clock, but Tim says 2. What? You got a different time. We used to do that. Seriously. Number three is, when you show up on time, all your friends think something's really wrong, and they ask you, what's up? <laughs> You've shocked them because you're actually on time, right? But I'm not joking here. What does God want us to have? He wants us to have an on-time appointment every day with him. Where we start are in our secret place and we go for a walk. We shut the door. No interruptions. Number two, if you're taking notes, Enoch was a witness for God. A witness. Awesome. Check it out. In Hebrews chapter, five, uh, chapter 11, verse 5, it says, We see that he had a reputation around others. He was known as one who pleased God. This is so good. You have a reputation too. Do you know that? You have a reputation. Every Christian does. What are you known for as a Christian? Think about that. If someone talks about you and they talk about you as a Christian, what are you known for? Right? My son Garrett used to be known as Garrett the trainer because he owned the gym, right? And he trains people. Garrett's the trainer. Now when people talk about Garrett, oh, he's the one that talks about Jesus at the gym. He's known as one that talks about Jesus. 
The gym is his mission field, his platform to get people to church. He worked out with seven or eight people. A lot of you are in here right now. Raise your hand if you work out with Garrett. <laughs> Look at all the hands, right? At lunchtime. And they sharpen each other. It's not about just working out. It's about sharpening each other. Garrett's known as one that spends time with Jesus and talks about Jesus. What are you known for? You have a reputation, right? Enoch had a testimony. He had a testimony. It's not a matter if you have one or not. It's a matter if you have a good testimony or a bad testimony. What do you mean, Pastor, a good or bad one? Your good one is one that comes out of your mouth. The bad one is one that stays in your stomach. How many of you have a bad testimony because it just never comes out of your mouth? See, if you start preaching to someone, they're probably going to tune you out, right? Nobody likes to be preached at. But what happens when you start to tell somebody what Jesus did in your life? You need to share your tell. Hey, this is where how I used to be, and God's really moved in my life, and here I am now. What happens? People will start to tune in to that testimony, right? Remember, a testimony is not you bragging about your old life, because sometimes people get that confused, right? You talk about how hard you used to be. How tough, right? You're more focused on how life used to be when you're a non-Christian, and at the very end of your testimony, you say Jesus. That's not a testimony, right? Um, See, we don't want to talk about how much we gave up. We want to talk about how much Christ gave up for us. That's a testimony. Have you ever heard someone share their testimony and that almost sounds like they're missing the old life, right? I gave up all the ladies. I gave up all the drinking. I gave up all the parties, right? And then I, now I go to church and I carry the cross and I hang out with all the old ladies. And I talk about all the drugs they have to take now. <laughs> and then I get invited to the parties and I bring a casserole. Life is real good. Nobody wants to follow that type of Christian. That's not a testimony. That's a test of bummer. Your testimony has to point people to Jesus, not push them away from Jesus. Amen, right? Now, some of you may or may not know this clip, but I want to show you a famous priest on how not to share your testimony. Here we go. Listen, I know the wrestlers get all the fancy ladies and the clothes and the free creams and lotions. But my life is good. Really good. I get to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and make some soup. It's the best. Love it. I get to lay in a bed by myself all of my life. It's fantastic. How not to share your testimony. All those little kids were, I don't want to be a Christian, right? So being a Christian is really, guys, is exciting and fun because I never know what God's going to ask me to do next. And I love change. What is God asking you to do to step into something? And that may shock people. God may be asking you to do something, to step out in faith. What is God doing in your life right now? It's exciting to be a Christian. Now, here's what we give up as a Christian. Here's what we gave up. We give up sin. And we gave up a place in hell, didn't we? That's the truth of it. That's what we gave up. What did you gain? A relationship with Jesus that loves you and a place in heaven. That's a good, that's a good, that's a, that's a good deal. That's a good win. That's a win-win for you. That's a win-win, right? The primary, way, the primary way that God reaches non-Christians is through verbal communication. The Bible says, how will they hear unless someone tells them? How will they hear unless someone, you're the person. My job is, a, it says the priests are to train the saints. You guys are the saints, right? Right. My job is to train you up so you go share Jesus. If you're waiting on me to share Jesus, I, there's only one me, right? Because some of you have gotten really good at this. Some of you have friends here. You're here right now because someone else talked to, about Jesus in their life to you, and you got, I want that, and you showed up to church, right? If every Christian would art articulate their faith, their testimony, less then three minutes, this world would change upside down. I'm telling you, if you would share your testimony and share the gospel under three minutes. You may have a long version of your testimony, but if you get it down, I'm telling you, life will change. Picture this. Picture if you were trapped in an elevator, and you knew that there were only three. You could see on your little deal that there were three minutes of oxygen left, you and the other five people. And right now, God becomes a very real option for all of them. And they're looking at you because you've got the cross necklace and the scriptures tattooed on your arm. And the Christian teacher you always wear to work. And they're looking at you, and they say, what is it? In that moment, remember, you got three minutes to lead them to Jesus. Could you do it? Could you do it right now if you're trapped in the elevator? Could you share your testimony, and could you share the gospel under three minutes? Because they're staring at you. 
And the world right now is staring at them. It's not, they're not getting <laughs> what they thought they were going to get, and they're left empty, and they're staring at us. Christians, are you ready for your testimony to come out of you? Can you share the gospel? Some of you go, I don't even know what the gospel is. Well, good for you. I'm about to share this with you. If you don't get it out today, no outs, you didn't know, because I'm going to share this with you. It could be something like this. In that elevator, it might be something like this. Who, now, who, who doesn't know Jesus? And they all raise their hand. Who doesn't know Jesus? Okay, here's the deal. I used to be a sinner, and I used to be separated from God, too. But because God loves me so much and loves you so much, he sent his son to die on the cross. He paid a debt he didn't pay because he loved me, and he loves you. And the Bible says this. If you believe in Jesus and make him the Lord of your life, you shall be saved. Do you believe in Jesus right now? We believe. Good, let me walk you through this. And you lead him through a prayer. It's the same prayer I say every Sunday. And you lead him through that prayer. And in that moment, under three minutes, you have saved them and the oxygen runs out and they all join you to heaven. Amen to that, right? You can do this. I'm telling you, you can do this. It isn't as hard as sometimes we think. Sure, you're going to feel uncomfortable. Remember, the gospel under one minute, here it is, I wrote it down. I think Ryan has it for us. It says this, I was a sinner. Jesus, you can take, get your phones out and take a picture if you, if you want to take a snap, snap a picture real fast. I was a sinner. Jesus died for my sins on the cross, but he rose from the grave, right? If you believe in him and make him the Lord of your life, you shall be saved. Do you want salvation? That's the gospel in about 20 seconds. It isn't that hard, and you don't have to be perfect. Well, I don't know. Let me tell you how perfect this pastor was, right? I'm in the mood to throw myself under the bus again today. Check it out. A few years ago, I get a phone call. I just want to share this testimony because I want you to know that God can move when you mess up, right? I get a phone call about 2 in the morning, and, uh, and a, a hospital calls me and tells me, um, hey, Terry, there's a guy up here. He's dying. He wants a priest. Well, he didn't know what. <laughs> That's a churchy word. He, needed some, he wanted someone to share Jesus. So I go up there, and when I walk in, about, I can see this guy's about, him and his wife, they're about in their 70s. And he is full of cancer, and he is about to die, and he did die after I talked to him, right? So I walk in, and his wife begins to share with me how much she loves Jesus, and how she's gone to church, and she reads his wor her word, and she's got a relationship with God. And then I turn to him, and he's right there, and he's a big dude. And he goes, uh, I go, hey, do you want to know about Jesus? He goes, I don't know. In that moment, something shifted in me. <laughs> I remember I didn't say it perfectly. I said, dude, listen, man, word for word, dude, listen. You woke me up at 2 in the morning wanting a priest. Do you want to know Jesus right now or not? And he goes, uh, yeah, 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 okay, I want to know Jesus. So I just shared Jesus with him. And here's what Jesus did for you. You're going to go two places. You're going to go to heaven and hell. Not everybody gets an option like you have right now. Usually when you die, it's like that. God is sparing you. He's giving you a time window for me to share Jesus. Let's do this. And I walked him through the gospel, and he accepted Christ. And then shortly after, passed away. I didn't say it perfectly. I just, I just said it. You don't have to be perfect to share the gospel. We can all do this. We know people are wanting to hear about Jesus right now. And the Holy Spirit's inside you. Remember, the Holy Spirit will lead you with every word. It's not your own effort. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Right? Every Christian should write their testimony out. Many of you probably haven't written it out because I hadn't before. No pastor told me to do this. But I want to encourage you, write your testimony out. How you were, be brief about it, a few sentences and how Jesus showed up in your life, when did that take place, and how you are now. It's really simple. And then write the gospel out. I, I remember I, said, I wrote it up there. Take a picture of it. And then I want you to do this. Here's our homework assignment, right, is I want you to memorize it. Memorize your testimony. Mem start to read it in the morning and read it at night, and then uh, start to memorize the gospel, and then say this, Lord, would you interrupt me? I'm ready. Would you interrupt my day? Who are you going to bring me across? Help me realize, and then give me the boldness to do it, because I may chicken out, Right? But I believe if you'll move in the boldness of the Holy Spirit, you won't chicken out and you'll share about Jesus. You're more concerned about Jesus than you are looking weird. You don't got to preach, you just got to share. It's really, really simple. But have you written it out? Would you write it out tonight? It could be about a half a page. It doesn't need to be 20 minutes. Remember, fast food. A lot of people, are, they're in fast mode right now. So you've got a small window for their attention to give your testimony and then the gospel. Let the Holy Spirit do the rest, right? So Enoch walked with God. He was a witness for God. And finally, number three, Enoch went to be with God. You see, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life. He didn't have to experience death. He walked so much with God. God loved him so much. I believe that he just went with him. Look at Hebrews 11.5. It says this. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended. Everybody knew about him. 
as one who pleased God. Everybody had, he had a reputation. He was commended. Everybody knew that he pleased God because he walked with them. Have you heard this story? There was a person at a cemetery. They're at a cemetery, and, uh, and they saw these words on a tombstone. Pause now, stranger, as you pass by. So you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be. So prepare for death and follow me. The person reading it said, to follow you is not my intent until I know which way you went. There's only two places we're going, heaven or hell. And this dude, I'm not following you because I don't know where you went. See, there's a lot of fact checkers, checkers right now, right? Fact checkers. A lot of people want to know statistics right now. Here's a crazy, amazing statistic on death. One out of one people die. How's that for a statistic? When at Enoch, he went straight to heaven with God because he walked with God for so long. I believe this. He walked with him so long, walking with God was normal, 300 years, right? If you do something for 300 years, it's, I believe when Enoch went to heaven, he wasn't shocked because he'd been walking with God down here. He's just walking with God up there. It was normal. How amazing will it be when you begin to make this consistently secret time walk with God, the door shut, you got your Bible open, you're praying to God, you got worship music on, and you're saying, God, take me to the secret place with you. And Jesus is waiting. Now listen, see the footprints up here? Have you ever waited for somebody, hey, I'm going to meet you for lunch, and you get there, and you show up, and no text, no phone call, they pull a no-show. And you're like, oh, that was a bummer, man, I, took, I got away to meet you. I wonder how many times Jesus in the morning or at night, whenever your quiet time is, he's waiting for you at the beach, he's just standing there ready to go on a walk with you. What he feels like when his kids don't show up to go for a walk with him. He loves you. He'll be there tomorrow waiting. Are you going to come, Terry, today? And then the next day, but sometimes even Pastor Terry has gotten busy and I haven't done the walks like I'm supposed to. And then I pull out you version to snack, hope I feel better. <laughs> That's the snacking. I can't be a snacker. I've got to be a meal eater. God loves us and he wants to go on walks with us. See, one day we'll die, but if we have a fr friendship and relationship with God, we don't have to be afraid of that. And, and I want us all to have such a close walk with the, with, the, with the Lord, just like Enoch. We're walking with Jesus, and we're the best of friends. The thought of living in heaven, man, gets me excited. I hope it does, too, because it's way better than here. But until we die, we have a mission, Christian. We have a calling on our life, and that's to be a witness for God. You have to cross that relationship bridge. God's put people in your, your past, a relationship. You have a lot of friendships with a purpose. Everybody say purpose. Because those friendships and relationships are with a purpose. The purpose is to share Jesus. When you get to heaven, God's going to say, what about Susie that I put you with for five years working in the hospital? Did you ever talk about me? And you have to look Jesus in the face and say, I, I was a little afraid, Jesus. We're going to be held accountable, and we have to be excited. We have to share our story with people. And people are looking. They're more, op they're more open now than they ever have been, right? And this sharing your story on Facebook is good, but it's not. We have to be relational, right? But we all know people that don't know Jesus, family members, neighbors, coworkers, people that come across. What about the coffee shop when you don't know somebody, and Holy Spirit says, go share Jesus with them? Can you do that? Are you ready? When's the last time you've engaged with somebody in an evangelistic conversation? That means you share Jesus. When's the last, think about that just for a second. When's the last time we've done that, right? See, I'm not, I'm not sharing the gospel with Jesus to win the argument. You see, you don't need to come in with your, the gospel of guns loaded and ready to go. It's not about winning the argument. It's just about sharing Jesus. It's about sharing Jesus. Every Wednesday, Pastor Tanya goes to the local jail, jail here in our town. Every Wednesday she goes, and she gets excited about going to the jail. She tells me about it, and she comes back sometimes with amazing stories, but sometimes she comes back and says this to me. None of the ladies wanted to hear from me today. Seriously. And Tanya comes back, and she's not all disappointed like she used to be. She just realized sometimes when you share the gospel, you've got to be okay with some rejection. So every Wednesday she goes back. Maybe this Wednesday they want to hear about Jesus. Maybe it's this Wednesday. And here's a fact. There's times they want to hear about Jesus and they get saved. And many times they show up here because Tanya keeps going back. And she's okay with a little rejection. Are you okay with a little rejection when you start sharing Jesus? Because if not, you won't be a very good evangelistic evangelist for God. He needs you to be okay. Jesus had to be okay with rejection. He kept doing his mission. He had a mission, right? If this was your last day on earth, if you're watching online, 
Are you 100% confident that you'll go to heaven? If this was your last day, then you might say something like this, well, nobody knows how to, if it, they're 100% sure. Absolutely you do, and you must know 100% sure that you're saved. Do you know that Christ is living inside every believer? Think about this. If someone came in your house, was living inside your house for like a week, would you not know you have an extra person living in your house? You know the Holy Spirit's in you. If you don't know that 100% sure, I don't want you to wait another second. I'm about, God put this in my heart. Online, we have a pastor online ready to talk to you right now, right here in the church, if this is you. If you're not 100% sure, 100% sure that the Holy Spirit's living inside you, you've got someone living inside you, you're the house, the temple, then today's the day. Let's pray. Father, if there's someone online watching, someone here right now, that's not 100% sure that they're saved, they're saved right now, if that's you, would you raise your hand and say, I want to know Jesus right now. I'm not 100% sure. I see a hand in the back. Amen. Maybe online, say amen. If that's you, say that's me. Anyone else? If you're watching online and you say, that's me, I don't know Jesus, I'm, I want you to say, that's me. We have a pastor that's going to communicate. Anyone else? I see another hand right here. Amen. Awesome. God is moving. Anyone else? Just a little longer. You're not 100% sure. Why are you waiting? He's standing here waiting. Another hand over there. Amen. Another hand right there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. Let's go. Anyone else? Any other hands? Don't wait. Why are you waiting? Awesome. Hey, families, pray together. We want to pray right now online with you, but also right here in church, all those hands that were raised. Right now, just say this prayer as family. We're going to do this as the salvation prayer, so this is how you do it. It's super simple. Dear Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sin. Make me new. Make me new. I, believe you died on the cross, I believe you died on the cross. And you rose from the grave, you rose from the grave to, give me life. to give me life. Take my life. Take my life. It is yours. It's yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's Amen. give God a clap of praise for his goodness. God is good. Amen. God is so good. If you raise your hand today, we have a gift for you in the lobby online. If you did that too, we'll send you a gift. Give us your address. Make sure you pick that free gift up. Make sure so you, you tell somebody. Don't leave here. Hey, man, that was me. I raised my hand. Go tell somebody, all right? Guys, here's what's going to happen. We're going to sing one more song. Remember I talked about you get in the presence of God when you worship. Jesus is about to, he's not busy and gone. He's not gone to another church yet. He's still here. We're going to sing one more song, and as we do, picture Jesus walking, and I hope he walks by with your mouth moving. Let's stand and let's sing. I sing you are my champion. Cause you are my champion. And giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me. champion. You are my champion. The giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me Jesus.
Jesus has given me. Sing it again when I live. And when I lift my voice and shout, Pastor Terry just came and grabbed me from my seat and asked me, in 30 seconds, could I share with you all what it looks like to release kingdom authority into our physical realm that we're in right now? Let me show you what this looks like. I get a text message from a guy this week. Would you please pray for my wife? She's in the hospital with COVID. It's not looking good. He sends me the message that she sent to him. She said, it's not looking good. I can barely breathe. I have to do physical therapy, and it's not going to be pretty when they try to make me move. I won't be coming home for a while. I text this man back. I said, Jesus has her. Jesus is going to take care of her. The kingdom is going to come, and she's going to surprise herself at how well she does. She's coming home. Yeah. The next message I got from this man was the very next morning. He said, my wife is coming home this morning. I told my mother I've come to this place in my life where I completely don't care what you think or what you say because I know how good God is Amen. and I know how strong his love is and I know there is nothing that he won't do to come through for his children and we must become a people that will proclaim his truth. We will proclaim his goodness before we see it come to fruition. So it does not matter to me. I refuse to be moved by what the world is fearful of because Jesus is that strong. Jesus is that strong. Do, can we go into one more worship? Can we worship again? Worship again. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. We believe it. These aren't words. This is truth. Proclaim it. Release it. Release it. Jesus. Jesus has given me. so good God to us 
We thank you for your presence. And we can show up and you show. Is that amazing that Jesus shows up when we show up for him? Maybe you're online, you're watching, you're saying, this is the only place I can meet right now. I'm out of Satan. Or maybe you're home and you have a serious health condition. You can't come to church. I believe God sees that heart behind that. Or maybe you're home and you're thinking, I'm a little afraid. I don't want to go to church. I'm not sure. You've got to ask God about that. All I know is he said, open the doors up here. We're here in your home. You've got to ask Jesus that one. Check it out. Here's the deal. God calls you to be a world changer. And you can't change the world unless you'll get into the secret place and you walk with the one. That's just the truth. When we walk with him, we'll talk like him. Some people want to start talking, but they don't want to do the walking. And they wonder why they mess everything up. Can we discipline ourselves to walk daily in the secret? What's that secret place look like for you? Maybe you've got to get up extra early and say, God, I'm here. I'm here. And Jesus is waiting. He's waiting to want to walk with you. God puts this on my heart. A couple weeks ago, and it's this start of the new year, we knew to a new year, don't we? <laughs> we? 2021 is going to be different. Here's how. One of the things is going to happen. Stuff's going to start breaking off. There, in Scripture, if you dive through Scripture, you'll start to see what a fast means. What a fast means. It doesn't mean not watching sports. That's a discipline. A fast related to food. Right? I met a friend told me I'm fasting from showering. He was serious. I said, that's not fasting. That's just stinkiness, man. Fasting is related to food and we're... Here's what God said. I want a church-wide fast January 1st. Some of you have never fasted before. I'm telling you, when you fast, you're denying yourself food and a breakthrough happens. That's what happens in fasting. My wife's fasting all the time. I don't even know when she's fasting anymore. She does it so much and things are shifting in our house. If you've never fasted before, that's okay. We have a brand new website. It's killer. Garrett put it together. It's, it's lifeway.tv. You can go there and you go to upcoming events. Click on that tab and that'll take you to fasting. You scroll down to fasting. We have four different small little pages that we typed out that help explain what a fast is. There's a different type of fast. I want you to be praying what that looks like in your life. Maybe God's saying fasting from all caffeine. Maybe he's telling you to do a Daniel fast. And we have information about that. Maybe he's telling you to do skip a meal. You're not going to have lunch for those 10 days. It's a 10-day fast. What does that fast look like for you? And listen, what are you fasting for? Because you've got to fast with a purpose. One of the things church-wide is we're fasting for the kingdom of God to show up in our country. We need God to show up in a powerful way. We're fasting for that. God, we need you to show up. I don't care who's the president. We need you to show up. You're the antigen to fix the problem. We need you to show up. So we're fasting for that church-wide. And then what else is God asking you? Maybe you're fasting for something, a breakthrough. Maybe you've had a struggle in your life for a long time, but in the fast, it's going to break off. That's why we fast. I want you to go on our website and start to prepare your heart. Don't decide to do this, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the New Year's Eve. Start to pray about this. Go to lifeway.tv, get information, churchwide fast. Father, I thank you for today, and I thank you most of all for your presence. You're such a good daddy that you want to walk with us. Help us learn what that looks like to be in the secret place. And then, Holy Spirit, change us. That we speak like you. Everybody said, hey, amen. Have a great, hey, pursuit tonight. God's going to show up. This is just a little snack. Whoever finds God, we'll see you. Love you.